This is Adam Gorney with the Respect My Decision podcast on Rivals.com here with uh, Heisman Trophy winner, national champion, Matt Liner, former USC quarterback, quarterback dad now, and, uh, you know, venturing into the NIL space. <laughs> a, a lot going on uh, on top of all the college football stuff you do. Let's start with the NIL stuff, the Hall of Goats stuff. I explain to people that, you know, it just launched, it's just getting going. What is it and, and what's it intended for here? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, obviously it's such a wild space right now, the NIL and and the fact that, I mean, gosh, high school kids, college kids can make money, which um, I'm all for. Obviously, it's it's a little bit of uh, the wild, wild west right now. And I think regulation is coming. But uh, as of now, it's brand new. So um, I really wanted to be a part of it in the sense that I really wanted to help these kids make money and, and do it the right way. And uh, Hall of Goats is basically an NFT platform that's going to service um, these student athletes all across the country, both male, both female in every sport, um, and allow them to, to, to monetize their NIL, their name, image, and likeness. So um, the NFT space is a, is a pretty foreign space, I think, to a lot of people, but it's a fast, fast growing business industry. Um, you know, s professional sports leagues are, are starting to team up with different platforms. Um, so we're really excited about our platform um, that's going to allow, you know, these these kids really to, you know, uh, build their digital brand, you know, and, and kind of tell their story through um, their various NFT drops. And um, I, I could talk about it for a long time. Um, a lot of people probably be like, what is this? Uh, you know, obviously, hollowghosts.com, you know, come join our Discord uh, Discord. You, they can message me um, on social media if they want to find out more. But we we want to be a, a, a platform that provides the services for these kids. Um, and uh, it's, it's really exciting. Uh, we, we teamed up with with Caleb Williams, who's obviously one of the biggest faces in all of college football. Um, and he's he's done a really good job of um, wanting to learn kind of the business side of things and be a part of that. So um, he, uh, you know, we launched with him this past week and, um, we're going to sign a bunch of athletes and, and really, uh, hit this ground running this summer and, and get ready for the fall. So we're fired up, uh, to be, a, to, to launch this thing and, uh, want to help these kids make some money and do it the, the right way. About a decade ago, everybody was talking about social brand that you have to brand yourself socially and get a Twitter and an Instagram. And, and obviously that's super important especially for NIL stuff, but now NFTs have come into it. And a lot of people are sort of confused about what, what NFTs are. I mean, I can kind of describe it, but still a little confused about it. But this is sort of the, the future of how uh, at least college football players are going to market themselves and, and make money off their name, right? Yeah. So, I mean, so, so the basic example of what an NFT is, is, you know, I, I collect, uh, cards i collect trading cards you know physical trading cards like you know maybe we you know you did when you were younger and yeah. all of those things and and the difference in that is you know i can collect a card i can um you know get it graded and then i can go sell it on ebay or something and and you know make make some money um think of an nft kind of you know it's more than that but it, but a digital a digital trading card a digital uh asset a collectible that you yourself own um, and the great thing about this is that these student athletes can every time their digital asset or card is traded by someone who bought their NFT, um, they are getting a royalty fee in, in, in perpetuity. So they're getting paid through the secondary market. They're getting those fees, which um, when it comes to a physical trading card, like if, if, I, if I had my card and someone um, bought it and then sold it on eBay, I'm not obviously seen i have no clue where, where that money is going and where my cards are going so that's a pretty cool part of it that the, these kids and that's why in the nft space a lot of artists like real artists street artists you know photographers artists really wanted to get involved with this because um you know it, they get a chance to you know kind of spread spread their work and but also make a living off of it and make make real money off of it so um it, it's a new space but it's really really fascinating and as you just said and it's like you know, social media platforms, and it is about brand building now because these kids are getting recruited through social media. They're um, they're getting recruited based on followers they have. Like it's wild. It's just a different world that we live in. So um, we want to help them build that digital brand through our NFT platform 
um, and in the meantime as well, make money doing it. What do you make of NIL? And this that's a much larger question. I'm sure we could talk for hours on end about this, but how much how much do you not want it to be pay for play, which it looks like it right. might be now, and make it so that first choose your college, then choose how much we can make for you off of that. Like it looks like, you know, and we could talk, I'm not going to talk specific players, but there are $8 million deals out there for guys who haven't even become seniors in high school. It looks like guys are getting directed to schools through money. And, you know, just two years ago or, or when you were, you know, going through this, that was completely off the table. I, I don't think that's what NIL was intended or designed for, but without any legislation around this, right. it gets very difficult to, to monitor it at all. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the problem is it, it you know, they're probably in hindsight now, everyone's probably like, gosh, we should have had different policies or different legislation, but there isn't at this point. So it is, it's a, it's an arms race. It's to see who can be most aggressive to acquire these kids and in, in, in the ways that they're doing it through, uh, you know, different collectives or sponsorships yeah. or whatever it is. But yeah, I, I mean, I do think, um, Personally, I think it'll regulate itself over the next couple of years because I think the market will correct itself. There is no market right now. So, you know, kids are going to get millions of dollars because they're a big time recruit and they're going to go to their school. And, um, you know, and, and that's the kind of the way it's doing going right now. But again, that will correct itself, I think, in the next couple of years. So I, I'm not look, I'm not worried about it. I, I, people are all up in arms and this and that. It, it, it's going to even itself out. You know, some of these kids are going to pan out. Some of them aren't. Um, that money that's being thrown out ridiculously is going to probably lower. Um, and and there'll, there'll be a kind of a real market value for these for these kids, all student athletes, I think, in the next couple of years. Um, but listen, like the transfer portal has been uh, created a lot of chaos. I mean, I think that needs to get fixed. Um, and like I said, the NIL stuff, I think will take care of itself over the next couple of years, but right now it's so brand new and there isn't a lot of regulation that anyone and everyone is doing everything they can to, to build a roster, you know, and, uh, doing it through NIL and doing it through sponsorships. You do wonder, uh, if I, if they're poning up big money for some kid and, and then he doesn't see the field what kind of pressure that puts on a coaching right. staff or, or how decisions are made. I mean, that's just an in, incredible thing that we're, <laughs> that we're living through that that continues yeah. to be interesting. Yeah. And, and again, that's a great point. I mean, that'll change. Like one, one of the, whoever, there will be someone who doesn't live up to whatever they're making at their uh, respective school. And that will change because people are going to get upset and all of those things and the pressure, the expectation. So again, it, it, it really is a wild kind of time. And again, you know, through, through our platform, we just want to be a platform for these kids can help build their brand and make some money doing it, but build, help build their brand that that's lives longer than their playing career in whatever sport they play, you know, because let's face it, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, whatever, uh, women's volleyball, women's basketball, like, like the, the, the average career to make it professionally is very small, no matter what sport you play. So, Hey, we can be that platform that can help you monetize your name, help you build that social brand, help you build these things that will, lo that will live longer than, um, you know, your playing career. And I hope not, I hope people play forever. I hope they play as long as they can and make a lot of money as a professional, but, um, that's the kind of the approach we're taking with this, but yeah, it's, it's a wild time. Um, it, it'll, it'll it'll dial back here i think in the next couple of years people this is just happening now so people are like it's just it's crazy man it's crazy what's going on let's talk usc a little bit you were obviously tremendously successful there during the the glory days really um things had certainly fallen off for a little while now it seems like there's a little bit of energy back at least guarded optimism about what lincoln riley can do their excitement a lot of people at the spring game a lot of recruits coming in is USC primed to be, to return to national prominence? Can Lincoln do that alone? And and does he need to stem this this idea that all southern almost all Southern California kids almost leave now to go elsewhere? Yeah, I, I mean, I I spent some time around spring practice. I went to the game. Um, I, I've known Lincoln since his time at OU because we covered that uh, from Fox. We covered a lot of Oklahoma games. Um, ton of respect for him. Great coach. Great offensive mind. Um, and he has, it's going to take time. Like I'm not naive and I, like, and then the fans need to understand, like 
um, it's going to take time to build a team and build a roster and implement, uh, you know, a culture and all of those things. Cause it's been, it was bad at USC for some time. So yeah. there's a lot, there's a lot of work to do. Um, I will say this being around the staff and the program, there is a, a real energy and a real vibe that wasn't there that that was there when we were there, when Pete was yeah. there and there's a buzz and there's a, an accountability aspect. There's a work ethic aspect. There, there's all of these things that, that you can just tell and feel based on talking to the coaches and based on the player's attitude and all of those things. And you can feel that just, just going to one practice. Um, um, so, so the excitement is real. Um, they are building something really special. It will take time. But there's no reason to think that they can't go out and compete for a Pac-12 championship this fall. They're, 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 I mean, you look at the conference as a whole and you look at Lincoln Riley's past and, and you know, his offenses and the players, even the players they had now with Caleb and some of these other players. And um, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get more transfers this summer, probably. Um, they're going to be they're going to be a really good football team. You know, they're going to score a lot of points. You're going to have to be able to score a lot of points to beat USC this year. So. There's no reason, that, you know, like, I, I don't know, do they win eight, nine, ten games? I, I think they have a legit shot of competing in the Pac-12 South and getting to a Pac-12 championship. Whatever that looks like, I don't know, um, but 100%. So, um, yeah, and, and, and you know, he knows, and, and shoot, I've talked to him, I've talked to staff, is the great thing that Pete Carroll did when he was here, he understood the recruiting area that he was in, and – from Orange County all the way through LA. And if you can build the fence around that and get, get those top guys to come to USC and then you go out and you, you handpick and you get a couple, you recruit some guys from you know all over the country that, that, that fit what you want to do at USC. That's how you build a team. And that's what Pete did. And that's what Lincoln is doing and will do because there are so many great players within 40 miles of USC that grew up being USC fans, their dads and moms grew up being USC fans. Um, so, so, so they have that, they have that advantage. They just got to go out there. They got to win games. They got to, they got to implement this culture and they'll get those kids. And, and there's no doubt he's going to do that. Be honest with me. When Paul Hackett got fired and you were committed and Pete Carroll came in and you really didn't know who he was, were you close to decommitting and going somewhere else? Or were you always going to SC? You know, that. <sighs> It's, it's weird. Like looking back, probably I looking back, I probably was never really close to leaving USC just because like I couldn't leave home. Like yeah. when I look back at it, like I grew up in Orange County. I committed to USC originally, not because they were good, because I just I, I felt comfortable there and I wanted to stay close to home. I was actually very close to going to Michigan. It was Michigan and USC in that initial kind of commitment process. Um, but I just ultimately I couldn't leave home. So then when 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 Hackett and that staff got fired, um, naturally I opened up my commitment. Um, and I remember actually it's funny because you know Coach Stoops and I are really good, good buddies. Coach Stoops recruited me to Oklahoma. It was Chuck Long was there, Mark Mangino, and they had just won a national. They were recruiting me during their national championship run in 2000 or 2001. And uh, Josh Heupel is a quarterback, so I was out there for bowl practice. And I was like, this place is awesome. But I, I didn't, you know, I, I felt better at Michigan than I did in Norman, Oklahoma. Um, but I was never really that close looking back at it. Like I knew I wanted to stay close to home. I didn't feel great at UCLA. And then when P got hired and you met Norm Chow and you met, you know, the Sarkeesian, the coaches they had, I just knew that was a great fit for me. Being a quarterback dad now, your son is a 2026 quarterback. It's I believe is going to modern day next year. Yep. Um, how are you going to handle the process? Are you going to be the quarterback dad? Are you going to be, <laughs> be kind of, how, how's this going to go for you? And do you even really know yet? You know, you know, I, I've, it's funny. It's, it's, it's all happening very fast. Um, and uh, he's, he's, you know, he's, a, he's a great basketball player, really good football player. Just, just a great athlete, loves sports, you know, plays them all. Um and, uh, you know, obviously just got his first few offers last week. And I was like, wow, okay, it's happening. Like it, it's starting to happen. And look, I, I think for me, I've never been a quarterback dad. I, I coached him in, in the leagues around here in the South Bay. Um, I never really trained him. Um, I just, I, you know, my dad was like that, you know, I played all the sports growing up and my dad was my baseball coach, but like, 
it wasn't the, it was just like, I'm your coach, but I'm also your dad. I'll teach you. And, and, and but I'm not going to be that yeller and screamer. I'm not going to be the one that's going to put all this pressure and expectation on you. Um, and, you know, naturally I get it because of my career and, and what I was able to accomplish and, and who I am, but I've never ever been that dad to him. I've always just been a dad, you know, I'll coach him when I can. I'm proud of him when he plays. I, I root him on when he plays basketball. I don't care if he has zero points or 50. Yeah. Um, and I've always been like that. But as we kind of go through this process and navigate NIL and navigate the recruitment process and all of the, all of the things that happened, because I, I, I went through it much differently, but I did go through it. Um, I'm definitely can be a great sounding board for him and a great person for him. And, and I want to be that I can help navigate um, him through this experience and, and, and do it in a way that that hopefully is enjoyable for him and 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 hopefully that he can learn and that's already happening now you know with yeah. with with the offers coming in the camps that he's doing and the questions that he's asking and and again I lived it I live in it currently um I I'm you know big part of college football right now and I all of these things so um I feel like I can really help him in that regard yeah. um and and that, that's and and look at the end of the day I just like these next 4 years for him are going to be I love my high school experience. It's some of the best years of my life. So I just want him to enjoy it and not worry about the expectation, the pressure that, you know, that, that happens naturally when you're a quarterback and you're playing at modern day, a very high level program. But like he's, he's been able to handle that to this point and he'll handle that just fine in the next couple of years. I've been around a lot of years and I've found that the best quarterback dads are the ones who have expectations, but aren't completely off the rails and encourage their kid to play different sports. And I think you've seen that in the NFL. NFL execs love guys oh, yeah. that play different sports. And I think that isn't encouraged enough. And this specialty training is is important, but it's certainly not what what guys are looking for down the road. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've like it is way more competitive now than it's than it was when I was growing up. And the camps and and the social media and just everything that has to go with recruiting and development, all of these things. But um you know, like, like I told, I told him and I told everyone like, like, dude, like, like, yeah, like Cole's a, a natural athlete. He's, he's talented. Um, but like, uh, like he's going to grow and mature and, 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 and work on his own and do these things. Like he doesn't need to be seen a, a quarterback coach when he's seven years old playing all these teams. Like, like he's very raw in that regard. But you wouldn't know it when you watch him play. Um, but that's just because he's, he's, He's an athlete and he loves it and he, and he, and he's working and he's learning a lot every day now. But, um, I tell parents all the time, like play them all. You don't want to be specialized in one, in just one sport one, because then when you get to high school, like, like one, you have bad habits or you have habits that you were only trained and it's hard to break those or, um, you know, or you burn out, you know, you burn out early. I've seen a ton of, a ton of that. And obviously with, with him and, and his friends, dads, I'm very close with and, and all of them, you know, they're all you know, 14, 15, 16 years old playing high school sports and just, you know, let them play as many as possible, as long as, as long as they can, um, train and everything, you know, the versatility the athleticism, all that stuff. I mean, that, that, all that translates over to every sport. Um, so that's what Cole's done and that's what, you know, we've encouraged him to do and, uh, that's all he knows. And that, and that I'm, trust me, I'm more than happy with that. And I tell him all the time, I, I said, I said, you're going to be competing against kids that have been trained at this position for the last 12 years. Don't worry about it, man. Like, you know, don't worry. You're going to be just fine. Like you're, you're, you're perfect where you are in your path. Go out there, work hard, be a sponge, learn. Um, you're going to have the best coaching in the country at modern day and just go have fun, man. And it'll all take care of itself. I said 15 minutes. We went 19. That's enough. I think <laughs> Matt, Matt, thanks for joining me today. Everybody go to hollygoats.com. Check it out, figure it out, and uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely do this again for sure. Thanks for having All me. Right. Bud. Thanks. Appreciate it.